I'm oddly a little too excited for today's video, but I'll explain why. Remember this aquarium right here? It's a 40 gallon breeder size tank. It's uh, 36 inches long, 18 inches front to back, and I believe it's like uh, around 17 inches tall. I don't know, it's a common 40 gallon breeder. Uh, and you guys will remember, we're filtering this with a simple sponge filter. Yes, you heard that right. You can set up a beautiful aquarium and still use some of the most basic and cheapest methods of filtration and still have a highly successful aquarium. With that said, the only thing that's really changed in this aquarium is a couple of things. One, the wood is finally sunk and is staying in place for the most part. Two, I added a bit of Anubius. Uh, these were my worst pieces because I don't know how they're going to do in this aquarium. So some of the leaves are bit and whatnot. Uh, and I just added them throughout a little bit on the ground and a few throughout there. They're not glued, they're just kind of stuck, uh, you know, squeezed in between the roots and that sort of thing. And we'll see what happens over time. But if, if what I think will happen is all this entire area will just be covered in those Anubias plants. And I think it'll just look absolutely gorgeous over time. But a couple of things I did want to do is take a closer look. Mind you, the tank's a little cloudy and um, bubbly because I just did a water change. That's something I like to do before I add fish to a brand new aquarium, before I put in its cycled media and whatnot, is do a water change. Make sure, just in case anything was in the water, I want to dilute it um, and start almost fresh. So some of the wood, as you can see, has a little bit of fungus on it. That's normal uh, for wood when you first introduce it, especially hardwoods like manzanita. Uh, what's going to happen there is it looks like that just for the first few weeks and then eventually goes away uh, Honestly, it's just the fish will eat it and it's harmless totally fine for them as well uh, all of the Leaf litter on the floor of the tank is still there. That's a good sign I think it'll be there for far longer than the average aquarium simply because I don't think these epistles were gonna mess with it that much But they might use them to lay eggs. They might lay eggs underneath of it I think ultimately though it's gonna be a fantastic aquarium especially since we're adding in four different species. Now, as for the fish, that's their tank up there. And all the way down here is their quarantine aquarium. I don't mess with these. I leave them alone. Uh, you can see it. They're just coated in algae. Now, some people will say, you know, why not clean the front glass? I do sometimes, but I don't put a focus on it because it technically adds uh, a little bit of protection for the fish and, you know, a little privacy. It keeps them a little calm as they're acclimating to their new captive environment. The problem is, is I don't know how many is in this tank. Sometimes I'll only see one or two and other days like today, for example, and they must know it's moving day, but they are everywhere. I don't want to get too close because they're going to dart out of the way. But uh, <laughs> you could barely see through the algae, but maybe get you a different angle and stay still. You can see them just move. It's like a sea of pistos. And I don't know how many have got left of each type or you know, that sort of thing. So it's gonna be really exciting to finally see them in a perfectly scaped, or at least a, a scaped tank that I really like, uh, that's nice and clean and we can see them properly. The first thing we have to do though, is make sure that this is a safe environment. Now there's currently a sponge filter in it right now. That sponge filter is not cycled in any way. Maybe a little bit because it does have uh, rotting wood in there. And no matter what, if you put wood in your aquarium, it, it does contribute to the bio load, but the filter is not cycled just yet. But if we look down here, I've got two sponge filters in here. One's been soaking for months and the other one's actually been running. You can see which one's running, one because of the bubbles too, because look at this coating and the coating on that. Yes, sponge filters do have suction. They do do their job, but we'll be taking one of these out, most likely this one and adding it to the tank. Why do I have an uncycled filter in the original aquarium to begin with? So I was able to scape around it and set it up. Now all I got to do is pop this one out, put that one in the quarantine tank and put the cycled one in there. Take this one out, this one in. So simple. Now the aquarium is ready for fish. We've got a cycled filter in there. We already have a bio load within the aquarium that's going to continuously feed the, the filter until the fish develop enough waste in the water column to feed it its, by itself. But uh, now the worst part comes. You see, most of what's in this aquarium right now is like moss and detritus. Uh, I don't touch it at all. It's a very balanced aquarium as well. Nitrates aren't really detectable. Um, however, if I put a net in there, it's going to cause a 
absolute disastrous mess. So what I'm thinking about, I'm gonna have no choice to do, is take a hose and uh, suck out all of this without sucking up the fish. Oh my Lord, there's way more than I thought. Can you guys see them all? I moved the filter once and like 10 of them are out here. Oh, they're all over the place. Get, I don't know. They're, such, they're so good at camouflaging. That's one of the things that I think is just fascinating about these guys. They're everywhere. They're gonna have a much harder time um, being out of sight in the main aquarium now. Oh yeah, I can't wait. All right, that's exactly what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to siphon out all of this on the bottom and hope for the best. Plus, it'll lower the water level, making them easier to catch. Man, I am i can't wait. I'm really not looking forward. This is a lot of job, a lot of work. I wish I could just scoop them out. Okay, I'll just do it. Now, I don't want any of this in my drain uh, going down to my septic tank. So here's what I'm going to do. And plus, this is on the floor. So um, the end of the hose is going all the way outside and ends up on the ground. But there's a net catching all of this stuff. Now, in order to get this going, um, I'm going to skim the surface of the aquarium first. I don't need to suck on the hose. I just put this in here. I showed you guys this years ago um, where I see way too many people sucking on the ends of the hoses to get the water started. All you gotta do is put the siphon in there, tip it upside down and go from there. Um, but it can also work fantastic as a surface skimmer. So all we'll do is constantly allow it to drain, but also keep it underwater so that it's constantly siphoning. And I do this if there's too much uh, protein slick like you ever see an oil on the top of your aquarium that's just a built up of build up of proteins in a saltwater aquarium they got skimmers but they don't work in uh, fresh water just due to surface tension differences between the two um so yeah I'll suck all this stuff out at the top because this tank is absolutely filthy but just because it's dirty to us it's literally probably my healthiest aquarium i don't really need to do water changes on it i'll do them if i'm feeling like generous or board but i got a hundred other things i could do it here instead of this but pretty straightforward now that i have the suction started though and this is a great uh idea for you cleaning your aquariums but once i get the suction started and i got all the stuff going out of it to suck the bottom off i'll get that siphon started again and then just simply pop this off I hold my thumb over it if uh, it's above water surface, but now, yeah, the suction's going, so now I can go along the aquarium and suck up all this crap. Oh, gotta be careful, fish are hiding in it. Literally just sucked up this part and watch. There's a fish in here, I gotta be super careful. I don't know what to do, like tell them, hey guys, maybe don't go near where the water is. Oh, they're coming over to it too. Yeah, this is gonna be a nightmare. I'll have to take my time. At least it's going into a net outside. It's actually quite satisfying to do this sort of thing too. Gotta watch, cause they are everywhere in here. It's tough to do this with one hand. <laughs> oh look, see one just swam out from there too. He's right there. See him? That's what I was saying. This is why I wasn't looking forward to this. I knew this was gonna be a thing. Well, what I'm gonna do is suck up the most of it. Cause watch, if I come in here with a net, all I'm going to do is make an absolute mess. But I also want to save this, so I got the net outside. Man, a little chunk of something. Thought it was a fish. I'm standing on them too, so as soon as uh, as soon as I notice a fish go up this tube, all I gotta do is uh, kink it right where my foot is right now, standing on it, and uh, that will stop the flow. Oh, oh, oh! All right, I, I, this is way too nerve-wracking, way more nerve-wracking than I thought it was gonna be. But uh, I want to save all this stuff. I'm going to wash it and filter it, and then I'm putting it back in the tank. Because this is like the perfect quarantine tank for uh, little fish. Literally the perfect aquarium. Get out of there. Sucked up one of the balls. Didn't expect that to happen. I didn't expect to be sucking on balls tonight. All right. I got them all in this little container. It looks absolutely awesome. This water is the tank water from there. No need to acclimate. All the aquariums out here are from the identical water source. And I heat the building, not individual tanks, so temperature is also identical. I like to pour them all in at once to reduce aggression, uh, as well as to ensure they all get put in, you know, kind of at the same time. Oh, wow. Stunning absolutely beautiful and these guys look how well they camouflage man 
just gorgeous. These guys are going to do absolutely fantastic in this aquarium. Uh, all hiding, of course. Now, we had 24 of them. I finally had the opportunity to count them. Uh, and there's only 24 left of 40 that I originally ordered. But if you guys remember, that order was also the worst shipment in my history of fish keeping. Um, right out of the bag, I believe 15 were DOA, so dead on arrival. Um, I had 25 left. It looks like maybe one didn't make it over the next, uh, you know, over the following, what's it been, like five, six months since these guys have been in quarantine waiting for an aquarium to go into? Some of these guys were just absolutely tiny. Let's give them a few days to kind of uh, settle in and get comfortable in the tank. They don't look to be too happy right now. You can hardly see them because they're camouflaging so well. They're going to love this aquarium. They're going to absolutely love it, and so am I. But uh, losing one out of a shipment that was that bad, it's just fantastic. Oh, look at you already colored up. Oh, my Lord. Oh, he's gorgeous. Oh, you beautiful thing. Can you guys see that? Look how pretty he is. Look at his colors. Just absolutely stunning. What a beautiful fish. We got 24 of these guys. Oh, man. That's one of the reds, obviously. This guy under here is one of the very, very rare ones. Very rare. Um, so buying wholesale, these guys were pennies. I'm talking, you know, uh, I don't, not even a dollar. But this guy here, that ugly one <laughs> with no color, they were $24 each. No, $18 each. And I'm telling you, if you order wholesale neon tetras, for example, you might see them for $2.99 or $5.99 or whatever. On the list, they're like two or three pennies. Just to give you an idea of the rarity, it doesn't matter. Oh man, all three different species are just lined up there. There's four different types in here. What a friggin' fantastic, exciting aquarium this is gonna be. I'm gonna give this a few days, I'm gonna let them settle in, and then we'll have a look back and uh, see how they're doing. I suspect they're gonna be out all over the place, just loving this aquarium. So we're only about 24 hours into the Epistos being added to this aquarium, and I gotta say, most of them have settled in wonderfully. Uh, they are a little bit skittish here still. Um, however, a lot of these guys are just absolutely gorgeous. The longer you sit by the tank and not move, like don't move it, don't move an inch, uh, the more these guys will come out. And in the near future, I'm going to film some more cinematic type stuff with some of my better cameras and whatnot instead of like these vlogging type styles. But oh god, look at this guy coming out of the cre crevices, if you can even see him. See that? That was cool. Yeah, some of them are back there. Um, but yeah, they're enjoying absolutely every uh, ounce of this aquarium. I was um, a little worried about adding so many to such a relatively small aquarium. But to be honest with you, it seems as though this aquarium is more uh, than big enough for them. I think I'd like to see uh, maybe a little bit of top action, but we'll see over time. First and foremost, I'd love to get these guys uh, grown out a bit and get them to you know breeding size and whatnot and see what happens there but you guys got to see some of these some of these guys are there some of their coloration is just absolutely phenomenal it's just gorgeous but a lot of them there's so many cracks and crevices and I think that's the key to an episto tank but these guys settling in so quickly was having the ability to just go wherever they want obviously there's some uh still some you know some of the rot coming off of the wood but as you can see it's clearing up really quickly it shouldn't be too much of an issue uh too much later uh longer but i can say that the prettiest of the epistos haven't made uh their appearance yet or at least my favorites oh back in that corner is uh behind that rock they like to say "Ooh, you're pretty these are some very tiny cichlids, so you're going to get a tremendously beautiful fish that's active and interesting and just super simple to take care of uh, that's incredibly similar to a shell dweller. Uh, although shell dwellers don't really have the look. Uh, the, you know, they're not as pretty. Uh, so if you're looking for a small cichlid or a small fish that's going to be beautiful and entertaining, uh, relatively simple and easy to breed. Definitely start looking into Epistos. There's so many of them and there's something for everyone. I just wish we could see them a little bit easier. Anyways, guys, if you guys want to see this type of thing before anybody else does, uh, consider joining my uh, 
My members section. Oh, look at you. Beautiful. I just love how they dart out and display like that. Um, yeah, mind you, I'm gonna have to set the camera up and just film this continuously for over an hour at some point, just so you guys can see everything that I get to see. But anyways, if you wanna become, uh, consider becoming a member, you'll get to see all this stuff first. We do uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we do uh, some live videos here and there. We also, of course, show pictures of, you know, sneak peeks and whatnot. Um, anyways, join if you're interested. All the links to everything that I usually talk about, my book, Instagram, that sort of thing, all in the description below. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.